Welcome, my friends, to Curious Expedition 2. I want to show you the early access and the even earlier early access. I had a little bit of alpha access too. Practice the game a little bit. <clears throat> and I want to show you the game a little bit. So Curious Expedition 2 is the follow-up to Curious Expedition 1. It's a great game that puts you into the position of an explorer around the 19th century, 20th, start of the 20th century. Around this, as you can see, the Exposition Universelle, the so-called Weltausstellung, was in 1885. I was returning from a routine expedition to Peru when we spotted a great storm brewing on the horizon. And that's uh, one of the story uh, characters here. There's a person you play, and there is the story, the story character that leads you through at least the beginning of the story. That's her. That's Victoria. A renowned explorer. She'll help you from time to time. She'll be your free add-in. That's the difference to the first expedition. Uh, curious expedition that was completely randomly procedurally generated and you can still play it. It's still good. This is though a different thing with different graphics as, as you can see beautifully painted like in a Tintin style. Um, and it, it has that difference that it has some kind of story now. And we'll explore at least the first stuff of that together. We'll see that a lot of base mechanics are similar, but they are a lot more refined. They're really fun. I was returning from a routine expedition to Peru when we spotted a great storm brewing on the horizon. The crew prepared to divert about it, but I glimpsed something inside. Land. An island in the middle of the Atlantic, where none should be. Atlantis. Over the protests of the captain, I gave orders to head for the island. It's probably her diary. Trembling but compliant, the crew steered us into the heart of the storm. The tempest raged with an unnatural fury. A strange fog enveloped us and lightning crackled all around. The vessel was almost torn asunder by the crushing waves. So this is a procedurally generated roguelike about the age of discovery, the late age of discovery. I mean, it, like the prequel to the Indiana Jones, if you want so. Yet, just when death seemed certain, we emerged from the maelstrom with an almost perfect calm. Also, if you like uh, the topic of a maelstrom, I recommend Edgar Allan Poe's Maelstrom. That's really fun to read. Well, it's, it's, it's cool to read. Directly ahead lay a lush tropical island, the storm safely behind us. We prepared to lay anchor and see what wonders this new land held. And there I can recommend Melville, but not Moby Dick. He has written a couple of other novels around tropical islands that really capture the atmosphere of that era. But now for a little bit more light-hearted <laughs> entertainment. So, you have a couple of options here. You can see that you use points, so you can choose a route like this. You can choose all the waypoints. And you can also disable that, so you can plan your route. This is um, important because there's different kinds of terrain. If you move through the jungle, for example, it costs more of that. That is the resource you have, that's sanity. If you go in there for too long, you lose your sanity a lot. and. Um, we need to explore the mysterious island and uncover its secrets. So we lose sanity. We have a hundred sanity, as you can see. This is, it usually gives you the least sanity intensive path, but there can be dangerous things. So you, you usually want to plan your path. Sometimes you also want to get on a hill because on a hill you can see more of that area that will uncover as we move on. As you see, we have three explorers cannot yet access uh, the management. That's her, Victoria, and this man is an anthropologist and this man is a treasure hunter. So they're um, <clears throat> two absolutely different characters. We're just going to move the standard move here. So this man seeks to have friends in the natives and this man seeks to kill and loot anything. So both have their ways to get to fame and exposition tickets. So each move costs sanity. 
making fewer moves is more efficient because you have a base cost of sanity as you can see that's six and from that on if you move in the standard terrain which is grassland or maybe on the beach each tile costs one only so you want to move as far as you want but you also want to cover everything so you can discover everything and this means it's tempting to go like like this here and then down there but you want to do it in one move because otherwise you'll have to pay up another six right so you could plan it like that for example to have the full coverage or uncoverage rather Now, why is sanity so important? You can go below sanity, but then something will happen. Look at that, we have an unknown location found. Should move within two tiles to reach it, which means you should be adjacent to it or on it to access that thing. And that saves you a step, so you usually step like here or here, or maybe even here. And this is unknown, so we're gonna move here to uncover that as well. Maybe there's something there, probably not. We have found an old ship. Fascinating. And we can't... They've stopped me here now. So we have to move again. <laughs> should move next to the shipwreck. And you can see... We should move directly in. That's probably the best position. Because we're close to a mountain that we can maybe... There is a way to... Um, bombard a, a path into the mountain and that is dynamite and if we're lucky we'll find dynamite because as you can see there's a lot of mountains here and if we don't find dynamite then we're not gonna go gonna go and progress so as this is a still the tutorial we're probably gonna find dynamite so you can manipulate your surroundings too I came across an astounding discovery the wreck of what looked like an old British naval ship. I couldn't help but wonder how it had come to rest here. With every step we took on this strange island, we seemed to encounter another mystery. Search the ship. Carefully testing the rotten planks before entering, we made a thor thorough inspection of the ship. After a time, we found several items of value. And it's possible you find just some items but usually you will have to roll for that depending on your choices of people that you take with you on the expedition you have different roles and then different outcomes you can manipulate the roles with different items so there's a sense to all of it what we have at the moment here is chocolate that is pro probably the best thing to restore your sanity so i always at home have a have a big packet of chocolates nearby in case I, I tend to lose my sanity I just eat it eat a full chocolate bar and and then yeah I'm I'm really good again like it's it's tested and true and we can take it all as you can see here we have dynamite there you can blast passages through mountains and tough foes which is like you can have fights here mainly against animals and if you use the dynamite that's an area effect in damage. So let's take that. We have seven dynamite here, which is an extraordinarily high amount of, of that. And we have first aid kits. If one of you gets injured, you can save him with the first aid kit. You can heal him. And it will also prevent infections. Because if you walk around the jungle injured, you'll likely get an infection that might kill you. Or might kill one of your people of the expedition then you have the shovel you can dig up things it helps you in certain encounters when you um, roll for treasure and also it helps you if you find a treasure map then you have to dig somewhere and for that you need a shovel so let's take it all. take it all and we'll use the dynamite now that mountain and kaboom nothing will stand in our way we can proceed now that's probably likely best to move just here 
your first and simplest idea is usually the best in this game. You can see we have found natives. We cannot push them. They're next to us. A small group of indigenous people hurry to our location, seemingly drawn by the sound of our dynamite. So that is true. We, some items attract certain events. For example, if there are um, elephant graveyards, you can find tusks of dead elephants there that you can sell later for fame and profit. And if you carry them with you, then sometimes um, elephants will go near you and elephants will also aggro because they can smell uh, the dead elephant smell from, from the tusks. They seemed as shocked to see us as I was to see them, yet once the initial wonder wolf, they demanded to know who we were and how we got there. We can boast or we can tell the truth. There's always different options. You can bluff, which can be very hard, or you can just go plain about it, which is usually a, a, like a, a small plus in relations with the, with the natives, because there are also factions. The faction is a, the, the natives. If you high, have high faction with the natives, high standing, then you can recruit some people or animals from them and rest at their villages. I will tell the truth for now. That's if you if you don't have very good explorers, you should always tell the truth or go with a bland option. Because other yeah, if you for the boast things, you need really specialized and well equipped people to make that work. So let's tell the truth. Using gestures and a friendly manner, I managed to calm the natives and show that we were but simple travelers. They welcomed us with friendly smiles. Standing represents your local Yao. The travelers, we mean you no harm. Of course, they don't understand. After a short time, they made it understood that they must continue their journey. Before they left, they gave detailed instructions on their village, encouraging us to visit. Let's show the village on the map. Here we go. So we have a path to make. There, you can see we have two standing, and you can usually talk with the chieftain if you have three standing. I don't know if that's already in the in the tutorial. So we could visit them right now. The island and ends here, and then we'll likely go up there. There's another area. Another area usually has like a a change of, for example, landscape, different events. Could move here on that hill. See a little more, little more here. Could move here, which is saving us a little bit of sanity, but not showing us much here. As we're curious, we'll go this way. But it's important to keep your sanity up in the later game. Otherwise, bad events will happen. If the sanity is below fifty, bad events will happen. If the sanity is over fifty, there's a chance that good events will happen. So eat a little bit. And keep it up. There's certain items that only give you sanity if you're below 50, so sometimes you eat them first. So we can see a lot from this move. And we see that there's another another nice thing here. As we'll likely go um, to the village and then up here. We'll visit this now and see what this is all about. Oh look, now we've found a shrine, a stone statue. I discovered a rough hewn statue, its cold eyes seeming to stare right at me. The great thing filled me with dread and curiosity in equal measure. Valuable offerings apparently placed by local tribesmen, were strewn about the base of the statue. So we could examine the loot and, and steal whatever they, the people left here. We could leave, a, leave an offering. An offering gives us standing with the natives. Uh, looting that gives us treasure or valuable supplies. So we can just look at it and not take anything. You can see we have a water skin, we have a horn flute. And we have throwing axes, so that it would be quite useful to have that. But it's not worth that much. So. It's 
strange feeling came over me and I decided to leave the offerings alone. Who could say who or what was watching? <laughs> yeah, I mean, look at that man. We'll leave an offering there. We have so much dynamite. <laughs> we'll give him a good offering of dynamite. <laughs> so you can see you have to reach uh, that check to give it. You can test what happens if you give more. As you can see, you can gain standing from that. As we have two standing now, it would be usually good to have like three standing before we meet with the natives. So we can gain access to that standing with giving them one more dynamite. Let's do that. I place my offering at the base of the statue. A wave of peace washed over me and I knew that my sacrifice had been worth the cost. Now let's visit the village, but before... I'm gonna eat some chocolate, of course. Chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. Also here you can already plan your next move, so this or this would be better than like moving here or here. It just saves you one sanity. Have many wars been fought over ch chocolate? I think there has been wars over chocolate. I'm not that sure, but most likely in the colonial times. Let's get into the village. We approached with caution, but they welcomed us with open arms. It seemed word of our arrival had already reached the village. We come as friends. Interestingly, they did not seem as shocked by our strange appearance as I would have expected. One would almost suspect that we were not their first foreign visitors. You can see we could, theoretically, in, in the normal game, we could rest in the village, which costs us a little bit of standing. We have now unlocked Meet with Ruler. As you can see, it's no longer locked. It requires standing three. We cannot leave because this is the tutorial story. So let's meet with a ruler. Usually you can also trade man from the village and wrote a mat revealing this village trade goods. We could also give them just extra items to improve our standing, as you can see here. Certain items in the trade menu are on sale, which leads to them being uh, usually add like a 50% reduction in price. So it's really good to buy them then. And it doesn't, it doesn't usually matter what it is. It is always usable or a good trade item. So um, you can usually trade with anything, with everyone there. So just getting it for something leaves you at an advantage for the next encounter. Look at that. Whoa. <laughs> they would hate to do that deal. As you can see from the face, we could offer them something in return, like a first aid kit, maybe some more dynamite. Let's be optimistic a little bit. Nah, that, I don't want to part with the shovels. Maybe one and a little bit of chocolate too. We can do that. And then we'll gain all of, all of the reduced stuff. Could also have bolas that you can use in combat, expanding your combat dice. We could have some torches. Torches are also very valuable. Let's pick up one more torch here. If you explore dark places, torches make a big advantage. So here we go. Came to an agreement. Let's meet with a ruler now. Strode into the hut where the ruling council held their hearings. An elder stepped forward and greeted us with an expressionless face. We were allowed one request. That request is recruit, recruiting a local for now. I asked if it were possible to gather any who were bold enough to join my cause. We could go for a native scout, increasing our viewing distance and having a little bit of, uh, as you can see, flanking dice and cunning blow dice native or the native priest which can terrorize the enemies or targeting all enemies and give them damage and go for a weakness reduces attack damage as you can see here 
We'll just go with a native scout as viewing distance is usually very good. And max sanity can be really good if you if you rest somewhere often, but I'm just a fan of viewing distance. Voloki the native scout joined our trek. Miraculously we can understand him. My request granted I bow to the council. Left them to their business. I emerged from the hut, blinking rapidly as my eyes adjusted to the light outside. We could rest here to regain sanity. Um, we can also trade. Oh, we cannot trade again, so let's rest. That evening the villagers were planning a ritual dance that seemed to serve as appeasement of their gods. They called these deities the Polycow. Strange words sounding foreign to their tongues, apparently these gods were builders of great magic artifacts. I was invited to join their dance to honor the great builders. I considered carefully, refusing might offend them, but a false step would be an even greater insult. And you can see you have three dice with each a 33% chance. Yeah, so you have a higher chance of success than fail. If you do it like a roundabout rule of thumb like. So we'll accept in that case and draw. And we made it to even two dice and were successful. The rhythm was entrancing. To my surprise, I managed to follow the complicated pattern without missing a step. My first try, I lost this. <laughs> but it is inconsequential. But we have higher standing now. It's cool. I finished the dance with a flourish and the natives erupted into cheers, clapping me jovially on the shoulder. I gave a gift to show their appreciation. A spare. Yeah, I want to read this. I know we can equip our spare now. Can I select Victoria and give her the spare? Here we go. Now she has a couple of more dice that she can roll in combat. The evening's activity is complete. We settled in for a quiet evening by the fire before retiring to our fortress. As you see, we are <laughs> resting to 100 sanity, not to minus 200. Well, it's very early access. I rested for several days in comfort. We felt comfortable among, among the welcoming villagers, but as you can see here, we're losing standing for resting there, so it, it has a cost. We can trade again, just to see if anyone, anything is is still here for us not so much so we'll cancel and leave told the crew to pack and departed as new adventures were waiting the natives wished us a good journey you can see here i would like to see what's what's in this so let's have just that I mean, there's a low likelihood of having something here, but I just want to see. I just want to see. So, uh, and I have, I have the hunting. I have the suspicion there's something in here. So we should probably move here to see that area, and then move here because this really looks like something, right? Let's plan this out a little bit. So we could move this way and then around there. That makes more sense because this is a longer, so moving first longer than shorter is not that good. We'll move to that hill so we can see most. You can also zoom in and out. There's nothing here as feared, but there's also a risk to these long movements, though. And that risk is sometimes there are roaming animals that are enemies, and they might roam into your direction. And if you not stop travel, which is an option, they might run into you, and then you're going to have a fight. So there's something hidden in the swamps. We want to know what is there. It's probably best to move just 
on that field. We found something. It's a shaman's hut. As you can see here, Victoria got something. Something is with her. There's something wrong. She's stuck in the swamp. The more swamp you travel through, the more stuck you get. So your cost increases as you move through the swamp. There's different things that you can encounter there. For example, also carnivorous plants that do you no harm once you first move through them. But if you move a second time through them, they are alarmed and they will try to eat you. shaman's hut. And now we can trade again. Approached an old rickety hut, a native shaman called from outside, inside, surrounded by an assortment of occult accoutrements. We can ask for a cleansing. If one of our people has some kind of character perk that you can assemble, like something like um, misandrist or abrasive or pyromaniac, things like that, then... <laughs> You can get a cleansing here for a certain cost and then that will be removed by the by the good spirits that you can see probably here or like here the <laughs> uh, these skulls let's trade for now rather skittishly the shaman got out a box and presented her voice let's barter let's see so we have different mushrooms that give you bonuses for the map or for the combat or for sanity if something on sale that's coca leaves leaves with an interesting adrenalizing effect also makes a wonderful revitalizing tea used to refill some sanity refilling some sanity is always good so we'll likely use that there's a couple of nice things to have for example the wound closing mushroom but we still have first aid kits so we don't really need it it's it's okay but the coca leaves are definitely a good bargain and now we can use what we have bargained for earlier either the teeth or the bait the teeth will be sold after the expedition leaving you with increased funds later on the bait might be removed too but you wouldn't it won't get sold so let's just use the bait a bit Let's see if we can also gain standing here. We cannot. Four leaf clover. Given another reroll is probably a good thing. The dream mushroom. That is very reduced in price here. Look at that. Minus minus two hundred percent. No. It's plus two hundred percent. It is extremely expensive here. Cost one hundred and fifty. <laughs> That's too much. It's too much. Um, yeah, the totem stick is very, very useful if you have uh, animals following you. As you can see, we get we get a pretty good bargain here. So let's make that deal. Took some effort, but I made a deal with the shaman. I want to show you the cleansing. Shaman was willing to offer her services, but rem uh, demanded remuneration upfront. She promised that the, after a ritual, the patient would be cured of any demons. As you can see here, you can give her some stuff, like again these baits, and then she'll be happy to do something. We're not going to do that right now because we have no one who has any kind of uh, negative perk. So let's leave here. We'll eat some chocolate. Chocolate is preferable to coca because that can give you negative perks. <laughs> like for example a drug addiction. There's a waterfall here where you can rest for free. So we're gonna explore the area and go to the waterfall probably. Or we could go into this area there's mountains here so we likely should explore this first then go to the waterfall and rest and then go up here so let's try that out
As we ventured deeper into the wilds, Volok stopped short and pulled me aside. He says something. It seemed as we were nearing a site of some interest, the old remains of what he described as the Pale Travelers. It certainly sounded worth interesting. And look at that. We have landed near the Pale Travelers. <laughs> Why are they pale? Well, guess. You probably guess right. <laughs> here and look we can stalk an animal here which we'll do too now let's eat some chocolate to be as sane as possible we do this explore the old camp we approach the abandoned camp hoping to find supplies and possibly answers unfortunately a group of scavenging hyenas was already there and attacked on sight now we have combat dice as you can see should roll the dice. Thankfully, we have equi equipped this player. We can select an attack die. And usually, as you can see here, oh, yeah, and we have to <laughs> select an enemy now. You can also combine these attack dice sometimes for bonuses. So, um, if this hyena, which can slash all this, they, they're identical, so let's just attack one of them. And it's stunned, so we don't have to attack it again. We'll attack this one then. Because the other one is stunned for a, for a round. It would be a waste to attack her. We could reroll because we don't have to heal. We will choose this to reroll as well. We can inspire now. As you see, we have rolled something differently, but it's the tutorial still. So we can inspire an ally. And we should probably inspire the anthropologist, as I just said here, because he can attack now. And his strength will be a lot better then, so he'll do more damage. The weak punch is three times the damage now. And we'll attack the hyena with it. <laughs> now it's time for the hyenas to attack. <laughs> Should finish them now. Let's roll, my friends. Let's roll. So we could heal Victoria with that thing. We'll likely re roll now. Re roll the three dice. <laughs> what a bad reroll! Yeah, yeah, yeah. We should have we should have bought something. So now, um, let's heal her. And then attack this hyena. Usually you'll have a lot more options with a lot more weapons you gain and, and stuff you, you'll gain. A lot more options in attacks. End the round. We only have this hyena that has infected us now. So she, he's poisoned here. Thankfully, we still have two first aid kits. Let's roll. We can also flee all while. We can real roll once. Let's see, we can inspire. That is, of course, good. So we could inspire this guy, Cornelius Arnold. he can attack now but I want to do a reroll first just in case we get some healing oh we don't get some healing hmm that leaves them vulnerable so we can do that Increase our damage. And then we'll go for the improved attack and give the hyena our all. We get meat. You can eat meat. You can cook it, which gives you like charcoal meat. It gives you a, a tiny bit of sanity. If you ever cook it, really give it, you can cook really well some steaks and it will give you really good sanity. 
You get hyena pelts, which give you gives you fame and some money to trade with and uh, animal tooth. But basically, the best thing to trade you can uh, take it around. It's weightless, which means you have a certain, as you can see, you have a certain number of inventory slots here. And these weightless items don't take up inventory slots. So we can take it all. Took what we could and cautiously approached the old campsite. Perhaps there were valuables that the hyenas hadn't destroyed. Let's search the camp. Order search of the area. A feeling of dread prickling the back of my neck. I hope my trek would avoid the fate of these sorry explorers. Yeah, there are the pale visitors, right? And as we can see, we find an old diary. That's pretty good. We find some whiskey, which gives you high sanity, but it has a backfire chance, as you can see here. Just as coca. It can give you the perk drunkard. And from then on, you will have... Mm, you will have urges for whiskey then. And the silver ways, which is just good. You can trade it. So let's take this all. Among the camp stores, I found a tattered field journal. Within the notes were the notes of a fallen adventurer. Reading the account, it seemed he had fallen prey to the arrogance of many explorers. I did it come across one intriguing passage enormous structure let's, let's drop that item can we yeah we have the weightless items that we'll keep and then we have some items we have to go for we could probably eat them like the chocolate theoretically we could eat it now but due to the event we cannot eat it so we have to just throw away something let's maybe throw away the bait goes away in all structure architecture unknown technology far beyond our own let alone these island savages what purpose could it hold he went on to give detailed instruction directions to this strange structure fascinating i simply had to visit yeah let's show this the ancient structure it's of course very important but now we still have to heal we have Victoria and we have our native guide that we want to heal. Directed the camp to tend to the injured. Let's heal him first. He's infected by the hyena. He felt much better afterwards. Let's also tend to Victoria just for the principle of it. So that the wound does not get infected. We can stalk an animal here. Which is what we'll try to do. Let's see. Yeah, let's move here maybe. That's cheapest. The cheapest of it all. Probably we could have used bait now, but... Look, we can stalk an antelope. It will cost you outstanding, but might give us um, some trading. As you can see here. I could see the beast on the horizon. Its ears twitching suspiciously. Hunting it would take time and entail risk, but it could pay off. We'll probably not meet any more for natives, so we can risk a hunt. And this, that is one of the items you could use to gain extra dice. For this, it, it requires one red dice, which we have a good chance to reach. But we failed. Spent more than a day of exhaustion tramping through the bush, but spooked the beast with my blundering. I sighed as I watched it bolt into the distance. Someone has seen us, and so we lose. We can try it again, as you can see. We'll do that. We have a lot of sanity left. We really want to stalk the antelope. Let's also try to eat some meat. As you can see, two sanity. Stalk could see the beast on the horizon, its ears twitching suspiciously. Try trying again. Let's roll, my friends. And this time we make it. It's been more than a day following the beast, taking care to stand up wind and out of sight. The patient, patience was rewarded when I managed to ambush the animal, taking it down cleanly. 
And as you can see, we get an antelope pelt and three raw meats. So if you have a cook and a, and a hunting dog, that's a, that's a very good combination. All the characters you can hire for your expedition. You finally get to that stage. So we could get in here to rest a little bit. And we will likely do that. And then proceed maybe around this way. Let's get first to the lake. Can we eat while we're walking? I have to try. We cannot. There's a waterfall here. Should explore the ancient ancient structure, but we don't really want to. We want to explore this here first. You can usually, if you're not under time pressure, you can explore the whole map and it will likely give you some bonuses or some extra perks or something, something nice. So we have already seen that, that there's nothing here. We can probably pass through these lands first and we'll do that. Recover sanity. We should consume items such as chocolate or whiskey, as you can see here. But we will not do that. We approach the waterfall. We arrived at a magnificent waterfall. It was an awe-inspiring sight. Nature effortlessly demonstrated elegance and might as one. You can refill water here. If you carry water around, it helps you get quicker through the desert. But we don't need that. We have not much desert here. We'll rest. We settled down and allowed everyone to rest. There was an unnatural quietness to the night as we rested by the fireplace. The urging of my comrades, I told a small anecdote of my travels that evening. I was meeting the leader of a small village in Egypt, seeking permission to investigate a local tomb. Things were going well until he offered me a local delicacy. I should never turn down a meal offered by their host. Not wanting to offend, I ate heartily. Unfortunately, it seemed that the plate contained a quantity of shellfish, to which I am terribly allergic. The following morning, my guide to the tomb ran screaming when he saw my swollen face, thinking I was some kind of demon or ghost come for vengeance. I would have explained, but the locals began to arm themselves they saw me coming. Sadly, I never did manage to see the inside of that tomb. Let's sleep now. Everyone's smiling. What an encouraging story. Is that a foreshadowing? We'll see. You can see we rest and every rest we get eight. The days of rest. We still enjoyed the sparking effects of the falling water. We went every events here that can also be negative, but we still rest until we have 100. The main problem with resting is it costs you a lot of time, and very often it can cost you the first place if it's a competition. As we were laying out our bedrolls, I noticed that the green bushes framing our camp looked somehow familiar. Taking a closer look, I recognized the leaves. It was a coca plant. Knowing of their uplifting effects, I gathered what I could before we went to sleep that night. Getting two more coca leaves. Likely a result of our high sanity. We can have these positive events. We prepared for departure. I knew we would miss the sparkling effect of the falling water. This pain void my soul. Let's get in a little bit deeper into that, maybe onto that hill where we can see a lot before we enter that structure. And as you can see, we have some more stuff to explore, which is why we're here. What is that? It's a burial ground. In burial grounds, you can meet spooky things. I approached what seemed to be a sacred burial ground of the locals. I felt an uneasy shiver run down my spine. I had heard stories of the consequences of disturbing sacred grounds. We could roll to dig with hands. It would likely be successful. We could make an offering to gain standing again. We could dig. So we want to use our shovel. We could dig. We will dig now. It will likely offend our native uh, guide. So we might lose him after the expedition. But still, 
I want to show you this solar dig. What we find is a mummy. You can also have encounters there with probably a mummy. We'll see to that later. We'll take the mummy with us. As you can see it has 35 of these ribbon points, which gives you advantages for uh, the Exposition Universelle, the World Exposition, where in, in Paris, which is basically um, a very, very important thing to trade. It gives you expedition tickets later, which you can use, for example, to recruit people or to uh, buy some stuff before that or get a get a sponsor for your next expedition that gives you a little bit of extra money all kinds of things like that you can also trade with it for 10 gold which is probably not advised so the main thing when you come back is you won't have a lot of these fame ribbons these give you big advantages and while traveling you want to carry around a lot of these money giving things so you can trade all the time let's close that we've lost of course standing our native guide is likely miffed uh, we can we have something more to do here and see we are overburdened so i'll just cook a bit and maybe eat see we're still overburdened i still have two chocolates to eat now we're not we should not be overburdened anymore, or are we? Let's see, are we still overburdened? That's crazy. No, we're not overburdened anymore. Look at that. We can go here and explore the rest of the map. If I have the time, I always try to get to every little nook and cranny of the map. There's so much to explore so many little things to <gasps> there's something we can still see here I will do that so we'll have a little bit of a stop here and then move over to our destination we always stop travel so if there's a question mark popping up I'm always ready to click stop travel have that here let's access the ancient structure now a haunting shape of the structure it's like nothing I had seen in all my travels the purpose was unknowable but it seemed that it might be some kind of great ancient machine what is that thing as we approached Voloki began to tremble panic on his face he frantically warned us their polycow gods would not tolerate intrusion into this sacred space. We could calm his worries. We have a low chance to do that, but we'll try. Or we could bribe him. Look at that. We will bribe him this time. I mean, we have so many teeth and things. We can likely, I mean, easily bribe him. Look at that. Yeah, we'll give you a couple of teeth. Can we give him more? Does that have an effect? No. For five, <laughs> for five animal teeth. Or um, we could also have something else here, like coca leaves. Got these on the sale, so they're great to trade, right? We still have the whiskey. But look, coca leaves—he doesn't like as much. We'll give him five animal teeth. Perfect. It was not cheap, but offering Voloki a generous share of our loot, I managed to convince him to accompany us further. Let's approach the other. Approach the platform that seemed to control the machine. A strange dread filled me as I drew closer, but the idea of turning back now was unthinkable. As I lay my hand upon the central crystal, a great creaking and clanking filled the air. The surface grew hot to the touch, and a ghastly purple fog began to pour forth. I fled that place, the billowing fog chasing me back to my ship. I still ached with curiosity, but one must survive if one is to make a great discovery. We must escape to our ship. We have disturbed something that will follow us. The strange clouds. 
So what we'll do now is get some coca leaves. Until we're nearly full. So we're in a good mood too. We can now escape to our ship as you can see here. You can go directly to the ship. Do that. Travel. As you can see this spreads. This is also so when you disturb an ancient temple. Then something like that might happen. It's either floods everywhere or there's droughts everywhere, there's sandstorms, there's fire. The nature of the temple gives you a hint to do that. And there's also like the void temple. And this is a similar effect to these void clouds. Something we have disturbed here is trying to take us, as you can see. And if the clouds get you, then you're dead. Oh no! What are we doing here? This was the closest way. Oh, hurry up, guys. We would have died normally here, but this is the tutorial. So we're not going to die. We're going to leave in the last minute. Let's say. A dark fog roiled behind us as we scrambled aboard the ship, the captain hurrying to set her in motion. As we sailed away, we watched the fog rapidly swallow the island behind us. I do not know what would have happened if we had stayed behind, and I did not want to find out. After the time, the fog itself dissipated, leaving empty ocean behind us where the island once was. What new strangeness was this? Malin, Victoria Malin, that's, that was our leader here, resumed her duties at the expo, but as her companion I was asked to continue learning more about these mysterious new islands. So we can choose a party leader. We can either choose the big game hunter and treasure hunter or the anthropologist. I usually like the anthropologist. It's not the first choice maybe. But we'll get, try to get along with the natives and explore their secrets. Scientist of native cultures. Creates anthropological studies that generate fame as you learn more about a tribe. <coughs> that thing with us. And uh, we'll confirm. So we'll not hunt as much, we'll explore more and talk. And we have our native and and a donkey, my my god. How good. After long days of traveling. I had finally arrived in Paris and the end the construction grounds of the Exposition Universelle. You can see there's, there's tiny things everywhere that I like. Animated, some birds, a balloon, people visiting everything. Just very nice. And you see the Eiffel Tower being built, the Tour Eiffel. Here I was to find fame and fortune among the great explorer clubs of this noble city. Brimming with optimism, I looked out on the fairgrounds. There's a couple of sponsors you can have here. The explorer clubs. And as you level up, they give you certain bonuses and certain extra quests. So it's always good to have that. Now, at the moment, we can only go to the bar, so we'll do that. So what we're going to do now is we'll have a dip into the first expedition. As you can see, all the basic mechanics there. This is the clubs you have, the bar you where you can recruit people, and the expedition tickets. As you can see here, we don't have expedition tickets right now. But these are very important. And at the famed L'Orlange Auvergne, the glass clock, and surveyed my surroundings. Renowned as a meeting place for would-be explorers, it was a likely place to find eager adventurers to join my trek. I gave word that I was looking for hardy men and women to join my expedition. Soon I had gathered a small set of brave adventurers to choose between. I'd go for a translator, village rest sanity per night plus one, which means um, 
that we will not actually have to have as many knights resting there <laughs> gives us gives us an advantage and we're working with with religious anyway so that would be a good thing <coughs> charles lloyd the sailor free naval flare for scouting terrain yeah that that gives us some interesting if you if you have a good eye for interesting points on the map where, where something could be then you use naval flares and that gives you a good um good advantage there with a low cooldown and brother ebenezer the missionary loves resting for free in missions now resting for free in missions is a good thing because user always has good effects but it's also not expensive if you trade for it so I would use Brother Ebenezer, even if max sanity plus 10 is good. In this case, we're going for an anthropologist. We're going to spend knights in villages, so village wrist sanity is pretty nice, as you can see. They also have different of these dice. You can look at the dice already. They can demoralize targets here and use insulting slaps, makes them vulnerable and give them damage. This man can say, come and get it, can taunt them, which means the creature will attack him afterwards and can give you shield if you curse or you give himself a shield brother Ebenezer the missionary this is a very good mechanic together right so you can taunt people to you or, or creatures and then you have the shield to block their attacks off brother Ebenezer can have even better shields and can strengthen you so, um, that's also good of course and Shapurni Setna can use the insulting slap vulnerable and damage I can use demoralize so that's also nice as I said I wanted to rest in the villages we'll go for the translator you also have always to look there's some little red things there because then they might have a perk for example, they could be um, misogynists, which means if you have opposite genders, they will likely cause trouble and bad events. They, they could be a pyromaniac, setting your um, the, the surroundings on fire, and then you'll have to flee from the fire for a little bit. So let's take Shapurji Seth Sethna, the translator. Utilize the translator and welcome Shapuri Sethna to our team. We can only recruit a one so far. Bustle of construction in the fairgrounds hummed around me. We can for now not, not choose one of these. We just have to select an expedition. We can choose between two trials and triangulations or the golden pyramid. You can do both in like in any order we'll just start with trials and triangulations which is where you have to find different points on the map for your sponsor and then uh, you're finished with the expedition this is important like in the golden pyramid you need to find the golden pyramid and then the expedition is finished why is this important when the expedition is finished you get teleported off the map so you have no more chance to get more fame from the map so you might always want to wait a little bit before you do the last step of your missions if you want to explore a little bit more of the map if you have that time and can gain more fame from it why not let's go for trials and triangulations because that's also the new mode the golden pyramid is a classic mode that was also there in um, Curious Expedition 1, so we'll go for the new mode. Understanding of the islands, Curious Islands is poor at best. By performing survey calculations, you can advance our knowledge of these strange lands, which will give us two expedition tickets and 40 fame. We can now select a sponsor, different sponsors. These guys will, will have you hunt uh, animals too. And then you have different others here the royal avalon society the lux labs the taishi account they all give different bonuses we're going to uh stay with these guys for now as as an anthropologist 
you probably uh, would go with something exotic not something like treasure hunting maybe as as a private company or um, something that looks like rather the rather esoteric i'm going to go start with the taishi academy as was tradition i made my way to the bar the night before the expedition was to set sail the porty setna walked up to me and said as this was our last evening in the city we should have one last fair round of throwing dice the loser would have to pay the next round of drinks. It was clear that this wouldn't be the first drink of the night for for him. And we have an equal chance to for the challenge, so I'll accept it. See? And we've won. I had won the challenge first. Setna looked angry but had to laugh then. Only one for the way, he said. We gain one more whiskey. Let's cheer to that. We can. Shield provides a protective buffer for your entire team. Put close to the island, meeting up with my supply whistle. Taishi Academy that sponsor my expedition. It's a ship from Taishi. I think this will be changed a bit later. You have really one Taishi looking guy here. But let's buy the equipment. For now. for now every one of the ships is the same as you see we have a sail. The sail is usually randomly for shovels and for climbing gear. So it doesn't give you a hint that you will have a lot of climbing in the next expedition. That is not the case. And you have standard gold here is 80. And if you're further in, you can uh, use your expedition tickets to get a better sponsor. That gives you, like, for example, 100 more gold, something like that. We have a good start here with a whiskey. And uh, we should definitely gain all that we can afford from these. And a bit of chocolate and a first aid kit wouldn't also be bad, as well as a torch. The things are not that much required, but that is the basic thing. My two torches would be very helpful. And let's see how much we can get from the sale. As we usually will find a native village very early on. And the whiskey should should bring us to that, hopefully. Hopefully. So it's a little bit risky what I do here. But if we can trade them in the village, we'll have a big, big advantage. We'll just go for the basic stuff. We'll rely on the whiskey. We'll make that a deal. The equipment chosen, I considered if there was yet more to be done before I landed on the island. We could get some water. Maybe there's some desert. We can always throw the water away. Water doesn't cost anything. So fine to bring that who's supposed to carry all that water yeah we'll begin the expedition for now. something about the strange geology of this island had piqued the taishi academy's interest i was to take measurements and get le the lay of the land for their scientists to study back home we should survey the island you can see there's a different points we have to visit that's our stops See what we can do. Just get the overview. We have to take two measurements. This is the whole map. And we likely, as we have no competition, we want to visit the whole map. So we have to make a plan for the whole map. I mean, if you want to get in very, very quickly, then you could just do these two things and be done with it. But that's of course, you want to explore because that's fun. I mean, it's also risky, but it's fun. We could go here. That would be an interesting thing to get on that hill in the forest. See a lot. We could get into this. We could just get on that hill and see a lot. 
we'll use one of our climbing gears, which is, um, and this is saving us sanity here. It is one tile cost because we have the climbing gear. Well, let's see. So we have an elephant. If we would be like the big game hunter, we would of course go for the elephant. Look how much we can see from that hill. So we can already have a plan here. Go visit the natives first. And then maybe go here. Maybe there's a shaman's hut. And then we could go here and see what's, what's there. There's a trader here. It's also very useful. Maybe there's a village around this place. So we'll move here and see what we can do from there. Just because we want to know what's in there. There's a, some kind of shrine. We'll approach the natives first to see what we can do with them. Then probably the trader and then a shrine. Cut a small hunting party in the wild. Approached cautiously, spares at the ready, radiating suspicion. <clears throat> I felt pinned by their stares. Perhaps they had never seen a Westerner before. The leader demanded to know what our intentions were. were. <clears throat> we could intimidate them. We have a very good chance of doing that. Offer to help hunt. Not too, not too great. This would make us likely lose standing. This would maybe make us lose standing. <clears throat> we could beg. That's boring, right? We're gonna help hunt, even if that thing is better. We're an anthropologist. We can do that. They welcomed me to their hunt and I proved myself valuable when I managed to take down a wild animal on the run. They cheered my success and we shared the spoils of the hunt. Get raw meat. The hunter stood stoically before me as I considered what to do next. They were clearly eager to keep moving. Hmm. We can give them a gift to gain standing. Or ask about the tribe to gain standing. That doesn't cost us anything. That costs us something. Thankfully we have, we have a lot of items. So we'll give them a gift. a very good chance. Yeah, they don't need water, apparently. We could give them a little bit of a climbing gear that we got for so cheap. Um, and we can give them, I think we can give them a little bit more for more standing. Look at this. That would make them extremely happy. <laughs> we would lose almost all of our climbing gear. Still, I want to try this. Anticipating further contact with these people, I offered a big gift. They accepted it gladly. Surprise and warmth showing on their faces now. A very high standing. The hunters did not worry or to tarry further. They disappeared silently into the wilds. Soon it was if they had never been there at all. So now we still want to go to the trader, but we want to have something first. If we approach the shrine, we might take something that would make us lose standing, or that would be dangerous. So we have to decide first what we do. Now, if we take something from the shrine itself, and not from the fore chamber, then it is likely that something will go off that will make us run somewhere. So in that case, we want to visit the trader first. But if we visit only the fort chamber and gain the loot from there, we have something to trade with the trader and no catastrophe is coming. As we're an anthropologist, don't want to lose standing. We have a torch and we have a shovel. We we'll approach the shrine first, get some items from there, hopefully, and then trade. Forgotten temple stood bath in the light before us. The terrain nearby was a dry wasteland, despite the lush landscape of the surrounding region. Something about this place makes me uneasy. Let us all stay close together. We usually get hints from the looks of the temple. And see what symbols are there. Well, I don't know. It looks like a plain temple. Let's enter the shrine. 
Inside was a small empty chamber, a long hallway leading to the main altar. I would have to be careful of traps there. Let's search for secrets. We can activate this and this. Only this here, but still, if we get two of them right, we'll get a bonus. We have one guaranteed hit. <clears throat> and that hit is from our torch. If we also had that brew, we'll probably get both. <clears throat> so let's hope we get the second one. Yes. We even get really big loot. As I ran my hand over the rough surface of a wall, a string of arcane runes flared to life, seeming to carve themselves into the stone before my very eyes. Wow, let's examine the writing. I started the writing, my mind becoming strangely focused. I found myself speaking words I had never heard before, chanting their strange song against my will. I lost consciousness briefly. When I came to, an inner glow suffused my being. We get regeneration. I enter the altar chamber. Consider the main chamber once more. Sigils drawn on the altar warned grave robbers to beware of a burning sun that would turn the world to a desert. So this means if we take things from the altar, then everything around us will be des deserted. I mean, we have water, so it could be okay, but uh, we likely don't want to do that because we're not anthropologists. While we're here, we might as well take something with us. As you can see, these things are very valuable and hard to get by otherwise. So you can get the golden llama and the silver ways, but we're going to leave them here now. Set to the main chamber once more. Sigils drawn on the altar where I want the grave robbers. So, return to the entry chamber and for now. We have found nothing. Still, we have a lot of items. We approach the trader. To my surprise, I encountered a colorfully dressing traveling merchant. He was bowed be beneath a heavy pack, but cheerfully greeted me with a wave. Proudly presented us with a selection of his wares, it seemed that he had somehow acquired goods from the West out here in the vast. You can see we have things f for sale here, which we can equip on the body, which sentimental photo, which decreases our travel cost very much. This is relatively unique. I had never seen it on another trader. With weather balloons revealing the closest location. Very cool, but also very good to trade if you have them on the sale, of course. So try to get everything overburdened then we can just gift some water to get rid of the overburdened thing and we have so many shovels and climbing gears we get rid of these and maybe the meat and oh, it's even it's not enough it's not enough still um, than that. You have also different weapons here, but these are usually very expensive and best to take on a sale. So we'll give them almost all of this for these two things. Man, that's the sentimental photo is really helpful, and the weather balloons might also help, especially when we trade. So let's make the deal. Our business concluded, I ventured into the wilderness once more. And we now can equip this thing a sentimental photo as you can see we have the sensor that gives us max sanity here and we can maybe <coughs> have the sentimental photo either here or on our body so we're a total wimp but it's okay i mean it reduces the travel cost which is very important. Now let's see where we want to go. And this should be our next location and then we we'll go for the quest one. Still have the whiskey so we're relatively safe now. We don't want to attack the elephant. The elephant will not attack us for now as it's not red. Animals that will attack you, or have a chance to attack you, are surrounded with a red glow, which indicates uh, the area in which they will start to have a chance to attack you. So, go here. 
Well, I should probably have moved onto the field, but still, it's going to be okay, as you see here. So we have an elephant graveyard. Now you can see what I've described earlier. This foreboding place was situated in the midst of a swamp, strewn with the remains of long-dead elephants. Hundreds of the impressive animals had come here to die. We'll search and we find an elephant tusk. I took the tusk, I remembered a lesson I had learned long ago. Elephants have a keen sense of smell and a perfect memory. I would do well to avoid the beasts in the future because elephants are formidable opponents. You don't want to anger one. So you can see now he smells that we have something from a dead elephant with us. So he thinks we're an enemy and this will cost us. So it's not without risk. As you can see here we have these red spots here. If we go along these lines We'll drink some whiskey now, for sanity. We'll likely go this way then. To avoid the elephant. Set up my surveying equipment, carefully measured during the lay of the land. Only one more site remained until my notes were complete. Usually you want to um, hurry up to get uh, to the second thing when your sanity becomes low. And this is the case now, so we would have to be very careful now what we do. Usually we could go stalk an animal, but this will not be done now because we want to be very careful now. As our sanity is so low. We hope that we'll have something like a village coming us, to us here. Otherwise we'll have big problems. And we have at least someone to trade with, hopefully. No, we have a dilapidated stack. Shack, we'll see what we'll find there. It's a shaman or someone else. I encountered a poor worn poorly constructed hut in the wilderness a desperate looking man peered out at me his pale emaciated form sparking pity the man entreated me pitifully he had thought to find riches in this land but now was trapped and desperate any help i could give would be a godsend and what you can do here you give, can give the man a, a donation and in exchange you will gain sanity as we need a lot of sanity we'll give him a large donation a lot of things we can give him, for example the elephant tusk, but we have gotten the weather balloons on the sale, and as you can see it's very cheap for us to do that, we could give him more, but that would not give us anything, so and he'll get some extra water for us, from us, in <laughs> just in case he needs it, right, <laughs> so we'll make a deal. Shaken by my generosity, the man hugged me warmly, tears in his eyes. Despite the sacrifice, I felt glad to have helped here. We get 50 sanity, which is very good. And look here. We've got something here too. Which we may, may visit before. It's a big risk to do that now. But we're curious, we're explorers, so we're gonna do it now. Also, it will give me a chance to give you uh, an insight into the events that can come if you are at very low sanity. Look, we have a stone overhang here. It's one of the places where you can camp. As you can see there's a campfire here. Arrived at the rock overhang, it would serve as a basic shelter against the elephants and the rest. The trek to, to halt to catch our breath, it was a pitch black night, we sat by the campfire. Setting up our night camp, I couldn't help but notice that Voliki hasn't been much of a help, I need to talk to him. Yeah, now the result of our low sanity is maybe a bad event. The closer I looked, the more obvious it was to, to me that something was clearly wrong with him, he looked sick. I remember that he hasn't been eating with us the past couple of weeks. I looked in his mouth and saw that his gums were bleeding, scurvy. How could this happen? 
It's very weak, so I sent him to bed for the night. We mustn't forget about this. So we have something here. But the question is, can we cure it with a first aid kit for now? Not in this location. So we'll sleep here a little bit. We'll try to cure him later. But of course, rest as much as we can. Prepared for departure. A pleasant pitch, despite the looming rock. As I prepared for sleep, I noticed Shapuri sat now, flailing his arms wildly. Stepping closer, I heard a high-pitched whine and saw what was causing the fuss mosquitoes. I considered should I help him get rid of the annoying things, or mind my own business and take cover in the safety of my bedroom. We'll of course help him. That might give us the chance of an infection, but might lower the overall chance of an infection, so help him to kill we have relatively high uh, a relatively good chance but slightly li uh, slightly higher than than 50 percent i think Let's do that we failed so we'll probably get stung and get malaria <laughs> waded into the fray swing my arms decisively at the infuriating insects unfortunately in my fervor i managed to accidentally slap setna right in the face oh great Apologizing profusely, I slunk back to my bedroll, face burning with embarrassment. We did not sleep well that night. We lose ten sanity. But we rest a little bit more, and so it's no problem. So we won't get malaria, hopefully. <laughs> the days of resting, we prepare to head out again. The overhang had proved to be a perfect camping spot. Yeah, except for that, right? But scurvy is okay. Um, now we can stalk different animals. We probably won't do that for now. Uh, we still want to find uh, the tribe, and I've really forgotten if this was here or here. So we'll just get to that hill and then see what we do from there. We will ignore the animals for now. I've already shown you the, what the animals can do. Can we make a break? Yeah, he's hurt. We, we need to stop travel for a little bit and then heal him. Use the first aid kit to treat the injuries. He felt much better afterwards. But he has not lost the scurvy. Which is tragic, but... is as it is here we go still losing health and more health so that's the last thing we have would have to do a snarf rattle or there's there's a hyena that you can attack um where you gain some stuff but we want to just go this way yeah have an old Found an old camp. Let's approach that and see what we can find out there. Approach the remains of an old campsite, apparently once erected by a failed expedition. We'll search the camp. We have no more extras, which is bad, but we have an okay chance to find something. Maybe we can do it. We have found nothing again. By the sense of foreboding, I decided to search the camp thoroughly. This turned out to be a mistake. Distracted by my search, I was the victim of an ambush. Uh, ow. Oh my goodness me. This could cost us our expedition. But not without a fight. What a, what a bad road. What a really bad road. Let's try this again. Yeah, that's much better. So, mm, as you can see, you have here something you can boost. So we have a cunning blow. We can boost that cunning blow with something, with either that thing or that thing. It gives us 13. So we'll likely boost it with the insulting, uh, with the donkey kick, as that is only doing four damage. 
can further enhance that, as he's the main one. If we give him the focusing fumes, a native leader, Volocky. Gives him 15 damage against the hyena. And then we also have the insulting slap. Oh, look! <laughs> because of the vulnerability, we could finish one of the hyenas. So let's end the round. Hope for the best. So we can do something in the next round. Look at that. The poison, so. We still are in for our luck. So we have flanking and an insulting slap, which can improve that. So we'll re roll with a white. Pass. And it's, it's kind of okay. So we have a weak punch that we can improve. We have the flank that we can improve still. Hmm. That will not give us damage, so we're likely not going to do that. I'd rather do the weak punch and improve that. So we have like green dice can improve the green uh, other dice. So we'll do the damage on one of the hyenas. Let's see, this one has poison, this one has not. So. the one which has poison. We should have given him the insulting slap before. We'll try that again though. So close. Oh goodness me. So we're all poisoned soon. We might have to flee that place very soon. Let's roll. So now we have a lot of heals, which is very good for us in this situation, as we would really have to heal Shapoji Setna. Very good heal. We can also improve our damage to that, but. Really, I don't know. Let's re-roll once and see what we can do here. So we could have the st the cunning blow and improve that. For example, with this, which gives us 13 damage. And we can have the insulting slap before that, leaving that one vulnerable. Ah. <laughs> I think we're just gonna gonna be giving that one a donkey kick and then we're gonna improve um, the cunning blow on that creature Round. Hope for the best. Good roll, my friends. That was a pretty good roll. Let's see, we can again re-roll. Ah. Hmm. Yeah, we'll we'll again give him. Focusing fumes. We'll go for a weak punch. And that cannot be improved or be used to improve something. <coughs> and the cunning blow together with the boost <coughs> will finish the beast easily off. Deprive the remains of anything useful. We gain a lot of experience, a little bit of standing. 
We look for the items. As you can see, we have some raw meat, animal tooth, and a hyena pet. Now we're all wounded. She leaves us very vulnerable. A lot of things. We would really like to study the tribe. So we'll take our utmost risk of infections and go here in the hope that we will meet a tribe there. Serve to the queen, we would be beheaded for such. Another ruin here. And down here is hopefully, maybe, the native village. This is the place we have to go later. And we'll approach the shrine now. Everyone is wounded. It could, I could hear the roar of turbulent water. So if we disturb this, then everything will be swamped in water. So let's enter the shrine. Let's search for the secrets. We have to rely on them. We're unlucky. Search in every nook and cranny, but didn't find anything further of interest. We can enter the altar chamber. We can have a look, but it's probably too dangerous to take that. Let's return. And leave. Now we'll like take that little detour and hope that we finally find a village. Finally. I think I shouldn't be traveling. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely in danger of getting an infection, but now we finally found the village. As I entered the village, my composure was broken by something warm and wet slobbering against the side of my face. I leapt back reflexively before spraying the culprit, a large cow looking up at me, the love struck eyes. I ignored the laughter around me and greeted the villagers. Welcomed into the village by several smiling locals, Shapoji Sedna seemed to know the language and began to converse freely. We can meet with the leader. Ready? I came and waited quietly near the entrance as the council waited. Matter of local disagreement, apparently two villagers each claimed ownership of the cow that licked us. One villager, cowherd, was the original owner. Supposedly his cow destroyed many valuable cocoa, cocoa plants cacao plants on the other's farm the cow herd vehemently denied I was enjoying the local drama when this council suddenly turned to me and demanded that I make the judgment who should keep the cow he was hungry this morning ate two bushels just like anyways who should keep the cow the farmer cannot do anything with a cow walked through my gate this morning more than a field was gone how do we explain that and the cow herd should keep the cow Snorting triumphantly, the cowherd chuckled as he left the hut. The farmer spat at my feet and muttered something about foreign devils. The council rather ineffectively tried to hide their smiles and asked me what my business here was. He would grant me the time for a single request. Could ask for a quest, could learn about the tribe, that's something we want to do, of course, or we could recruit. We would be early on the mission, we would definitely recruit. We'll learn about the tribe now permission to spend the evening interviewing the tribe in order to learn more about these people. After careful consideration, it was granted. I spent that night probing the village with my questions and learned much. They told me of their life as herders. They cared for their animals. The animals, in turn, provided the milk, meat and hides necessary for survival. After finishing my questioning, I returned to the council's hut following day and gave my thanks. My request granted, I bowed to the council and left them to their business. I emerged from the hut blinking rapidly as my eyes adjusted to the light outside. We could trade. Everyone's wounded. So we'll see if we have anything that we could trade with still. For example, the hyena pelts and the animal tooth, of course. Would be something great to have. Mangoes would be good for our sanity, but we'll just likely rest here. We could have a spare that is on sale that is very, very good at the moment. A native trinket. Improve the loyalty of a person if gifted. 
but we, do, we don't need that right now. We have no problems with loyalty. And we have the rabbit's foot, which is also in a kind of a sale, minus 60%. Gives us one more combat rolls. That's pretty good, but we, we want more. We would likely want to use mangoes. On the other hand, we could just rest, right? So we'll just rest here, give them that. That's the perfect trade too. As you can see here, we gain a weapon. That's very good. We should deal with the villagers. We will manage now. And I don't know if he will survive that, but we'll give a spare either to him or to him. We cannot give it to the donkey, surprisingly. And we could have the rabbit's foot. Um, one more combat roll. That's really not bad. Mm. Yeah, let's give it to Voloqui, right? He would he would use the spare, and we'll also give him the rabbit's foot just in case. As we've seen, he's leveled up. So there's a view distance of plus 20%, not only plus 10%, which is very good. He's a sexist though. So he's gained some negative effects now, he's curvy, and he's injured. So some really serious things going on. He just is injured, he's also injured, and we're also injured. So let's see what we can do. Let's invest in the village. For the night, I was invited by an older villager to learn more about the tribe's history. That is usual. So we can learn about the tribe again and then have fulfilled that part of the mission for us. And a fascinating evening with the villager learning more about the history and stories of the village. They believe that all objects had a spirit, all things an agency. Their shamans grew wise by communicating with these spirits. Let's sleep. Rest a bit. It's been several quiet and peaceful days in the village. Our time with the natives was a delight. They remained friendly and offered us more health. We have gained some health, which is pretty good. Mm. We could rest again. Maybe we could heal a bit. Let's leave for now. Packed up and sallied forth as new adventures awaited us. One native clasped my hand in respect and wished me farewell. I mean, we could rest more if we need it, but I want to look if we can do something else again. Now, we could recruit a local. Could we do that still? Let's approach the village again and find out. Theoretically, we have the standing for it. We can meet with a ruler, but not again. We can only meet once. So, let's leave the trade. As we don't want to stalk around anymore, there could be one thing here. One more thing, but likely it is better, as we are so wounded and sick, to leave this map as quickly as we can. So let's make a run for it and take the last measurement. Keep everyone live. Let's take the measurements. Set up my serving equipment, carefully measuring the lay of the land. My work here was complete. So we have a triumph. As you can see, we gained two extra tickets. One more extra ticket for the returned treasures that we have here. The unlocks available. We do. We have three expert tickets. Everyone's celebrating us. We can select a perk. Depending on your character, you can go for different perks. And see here, indigenous habitats reveals nearby native villages, reveal distance plus five. Impetus reduces the base sanity cost for traveling minus 40%, which is very, very good. The base cost is reduced, so you can take smaller steps which is a good, good advantage. Heavy carrier gains additional adventure slots, which is also very powerful, of course, especially if you 
uh, are a treasure hunter. So I think I want to I want to go like full anthropologist and reveal the indigenous habitats better together with the viewing distance from our guy. Would be great. I returned triumphantly to Paris after my first successful expedition, bursting with pride. I looked forward to making a name for myself as an explorer. Moreover, I was rewarded with a set of extra expo tickets for my efforts. Such generosity. And we can now, for example, go to the bar and go for a financier, as you can see here, which would give us a lot more budget, which is a great uh, help. At the start of an expedition, we could recruit more. You can see here we have different characters. They are rolled randomly, probably. Um, it's always good to have a, like a combat-based character here. We are already have our native, like the British soldier, is a very, very good choice. But as you can see here, superstitious, suffers from an irrational fear of the mysterious. Then we have this man. Is a racist. It would be terrible to have him there when we have a native with us. And Eugene, the missionary, is also racist, so I wouldn't recruit either of them. I'd rather recruit the British soldier, even if he's superstitious. I wasn't ready to recruit just yet, and oh wait, it's, I wanted to I wanted to show you the equipment dealer too. Hoping to find a good deal on necessary tools. So. But I have that here. You can have, for example, the shotgun, very powerful. And this is all acquired also by expedition tickets. So it's very expensive and they are just very good I uh, items too. <coughs> it's definitely good as the game goes for a longer time. You have to win a lot of expedition tickets. It's definitely good to have uh, to invest heavily in the first expeditions at least. Here you have the different societies that you can visit. So you could train the character, that is what we have unlocked. This very unlocks. This man, the Academy Master, Lance Kohler. The club shop. Go for him and have him join us. Let's actually do that right now because it's so cool. Sure, I wouldn't regret my purchase. And here we have him join us. So we have a representative of the faction we have already with us. Similar things you can go for here. And cure an ailment. But we can also do that at the shamans later. We can go for Lux Labs. Upgrade the equipment here and display the unlocks. But we have no unlocks to make. This is where I want to make a stop. We have gone through the full tutorial. I've gave you all the tips I could think of. You're now ready to go for further expeditions in this great game. Um, the early access is starting now. It's starting at the 17th of June, if I remember right. So uh, one or two days from now, depending when I can release the video. And uh, I wish you a lot of fun with this little game. If you decide to try it, it's it's a very fun game to go for. It's definitely, um, I think it's as good as the first one, which was really good. It has a different aspect as it has more story as we've seen, we've seen around Victoria Malin. She will return later. As you have seen, we can have two free expeditions with recruiting some people here. And then we have a story expedition where Victoria will rejoin us. So I wish you a great time um, with whatever games you play, with whatever you watch. It was a pleasure to have you here and uh, I hope I gave you all 
the info you need to either to, to decide to try out this game, to be entertained, or uh, to have a great start in this game. All, the th all these things are what drove me to do this. Um, I also thank Machine Mensch, that is the de developer of, of this, for giving this to me prematurely so I could show it to you because I could test it extensively before that. Have a great time until next time and happy gaming. This is Manuel Khan signing out. See you soon, my friends, and happy gaming.